just kind of like on this up and down roller coaster where I've always kind of like questioned my ability, but also had to like believe in myself and hearing other people believe in me. And then it's just that balance. So of like the, the main core of it is the mental health thing is important to me because I, I know a lot of people also kind of struggle with this kind of stuff. Um, and I want to advocate for that and have that voice be heard. Um, yeah, I guess that's, 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 that's why. solid. Um, yeah. So during the season, I had mentioned it during the breakout session. It's like, you're truly finding yourself in your work during this yeah. time, believing in your abilities, having confidence in yourself, finding your lane, something bigger, why you're creating, you know, having a, a bigger purpose to why you're doing what you're doing. Cause it's empty when you're just, most people are just like, I want to do client work. Cause they think that's the means of escape. It's going to be easier when no, it's way, way, way harder doing your thing full time. The side hustlers perspective podcast is fuel for your mind and creative grind. Each week, we break down the art of healthy hustling, getting out of your own way, and growing your creative business. First up today, we have a Greg from UK. We got him, Greg M. We got another Greg J. This is Greg M. Greg, the floor is yours. Hi, uh, I'm Greg. I am a mixed medium process artist based in London, UK. I go by the artist pseudonym of 20 Pegs. Um, as a process artist, I basically lean into a freeform journey of imagination, creative play, and a lot of serendipity. And basically everything I do is never about the end goal, and it's about what can happen along the way. Um, my goal is to encourage a healthy outlet centered around a sense of play, openness, and a safe place to allow vulnerability. Um, I'm also currently working towards getting my process art featured in galleries. Man, you really summarize that beautifully. So first off, Greg, before we dive into what's on your mind, what's on your plate you want to talk about today, I want to just acknowledge you first right off because Greg is in the UK. He's our only international student this time around, but round of applause because this dude week in and week out is showing up at midnight and is hella engaged, supportive, and always showing up for his teammates. So just wanted to make sure everybody like knew and it's midnight with you, like looking in, it could be like daylight, you're in a new setting, <laughs> got lights and everything, forcing yourself to stay awake for these. So like, this is, this is not easy. So I wanted to give you bad props, but what's on your mind right now? Cheers. Uh, yeah. So on, on Saturday, I made an exceedingly spontaneous and dauntingly bold pledge on my social media where I basically, I was really excited about an idea I had about 20 minutes previous to it, where I got on my social media and I said, right, I am committing to having a gallery show in 12 months time. And in the, in the lead up to that, I am going to produce a documentary that will document the year leading up to this gallery show. One feeds, one feeds the other. <laughs> and then I finished the video and I was like, uh, I've never met, I don't know how to do any of these things. So I am now, um, I'm now self filming a documentary, it seems, um, which, which I'm really, which I am actually really excited about and I'm committed to it. Um, so really what I wanted to talk about today is to ask you, because this has started now, like I have a 12 month countdown start, you know, it's ticking away. You as somebody who speaks to creatives and here's creatives kind of struggles you know all day every day that's what you do i'd be really interested to hear your ideas in terms of what would be interesting and what would be really valuable to other creatives to see in in a documentary that i'm producing um that it, that is about me and my journey you know what do they want to see in the journey um because i'm i'm really i don't want it to just be about like me and my art you know like i want the, I want the journey to be of benefit and be helpful to people, whether that's directly or indirectly. Um, so yeah, I'd really love to hear cool. your thoughts. And before I forget, also, I want to make sure, um, just so people understand what kind of end product you do create with your process art, mm -hmm. um, remind me to link up with you. I got some feedback on your reel already, but good job on that. But yeah, like these beautiful paintings are all done. <laughs> I think the majority of these are bicycle that you're sharing 
yeah. or something like everything that you're looking at now is all <laughs> is all made on the back of a bike. Yeah, it's crazy. So during this season, you're doing bicycle process art, but things always change in your world. So I just want people to kind of get an idea. Um, Jeremy's in the show, sorry. Um, but I want people to kind of get an idea of what is the end result that a process artist creates. And mixed medium is your um, name of the game of what you're doing right now. And the beauty of what you do is all in your brain. <laughs> and then letting go and letting your imagination take the wheel. To me, that's like how I would articulate it to people. It's not, it's about, it's not about like the end result. It's about, man, what's the process of play, uh, play look like? How can I experiment and let go of control and learn more about myself and enjoy my work during the process? So to me, that's how I would articulate it to someone listening in. Cause it took me a while to figure this out with you, yeah. but to reiterate your question, you want to know within your documentary that you're creating kind of like a self journey, what would make it interesting and valuable to other people? So it's not necessarily about you, but why others would care. What would others find value in? So let me throw the question. I'm going to hit you with a bunch of questions and I'm going to let you answer this on your own. So, and then I'll, I'll give my two Satoshi's my two cents here in a little bit, but when you find yourself getting intrigued by other people's journeys, what do you find interesting and valuable when other people share their story, people you look up to, um, people within the group here, you know, like what do you find interesting and inspiring? Anytime anybody talks about the journey they've been on, do you know what I mean? Like, I think it's the, not necessarily like humble beginnings, but very honest and raw beginnings and how they get to where they are. Because quite often what we see in social media, for example, is is a, is a very polished, especially like people who are established, what you're looking at is, you know, years, decades of, of work and it's it, so there's there's the you know opportunity there to kind of fall into the whole comparison trap so i i find the sort of honesty and the like the vulnerability to it is where i really kind of get you know get into it that you know then that's that's where you want them to you know to reach their you know uh, achieve their goals and stuff so i um on um, so I, i've one thing I'm very keen that that the sort of this journey is is honest. Um, so the the morning after I I made that announcement, I, I I made like a little sort of like you know diary entry, essentially video diary entry, and I was like, look, I do not have my shit together. I sort of did a pan of my bedroom, which is where all my you know it's an absolute state at the moment. I was just like, look, this is this is the state of players where it is. Like I, I wanted to get, you know, jump straight in with that vulnerability and just be like, I'm not like I'm not an established artist. I have no idea what I'm doing. And we are starting basically at ground zero and let's let's go from there. Um so yeah, I think vulnerability is something that I like enjoy watching in other people's things. I would find that valuable in people too. What do you find interesting when you see some type of feature documentary on someone you look up to or um, what draws you into other people's work that are kind of similar in the realms of you of artistic play, gallery style? I think anything that has like a strong concept to it. So something where there is, I mean, for me, I, I like the document and documentaries are pretty good at doing that in that somebody might have an objective for a documentary, but the whole point is that they don't necessarily know what the what they don't know the journey they're going to go on and that's kind of the point of the documentary what most documentaries particularly the ones that i enjoy are they are either there to they start from a point of uh interest and fat or fascination they go i wonder what would i wonder what we can find out about this subset of people or this uh this place or this process or this idea and they the, the nature of the documentary is basically to explore that um which it is basically how I'd go about my art anyway. Um, so it, it definitely lends itself to, to that, to kind of being documented in that way. But I think, yeah, where there is a, a concept that I can get behind um, and where there's a natural passion and fascination by the person leading it, you know, you kind of, you, you get on board with that. Um, so seeing something that's just like unique, yeah. that you don't really see anybody else doing like bicycle art yeah <laughs> yeah um but i think like there's that and i think then working with 
uh, I like it when there's like real, the journey includes engagement with real people out in the world. Do you know what I mean? They, they develop the story out by gathering um, stories and feedback from, you know, from the people around them. Um, and so it becomes much more like they're human stories. They're not necessarily, they, they quite often become not about the person who's, who's the host or whatever, you know, the documentary maker, it's much more about the people they meet. Um, so that, those are the bits that I really enjoy. And that, I mean, that's the bit I'm super excited about. I mean, I, this, this idea has existed for what, three days, but I'm, I'm mega, I'm mega excited about it. I'm going to keep firing questions. I hope this is helpful because you're coming up no, with answers is. yourself. So yeah, yeah, yeah. why do you care? Why does this matter so much to you? Uh, I care because I look backwards a year, like a year ago and I go, right, I, what have I achieved just in myself and who have I met and everything that has happened, like a, a lot happens in a year, even coming off the back of a, you know, of a pandemic, it, a lot happened in that year, even though seemingly the world stopped, a load happened that you can look back and go, well, all, all this stuff has happened. I've met these different people because you meet people digitally instead of in person, uh, for example, and all these kind of things. And you, so much can happen in one year. And so then I look forward and I go, well, this journey that I'm on, I still feel really that I'm at the beginning of it. And in 12 months time, I'll meet, who knows who I'm going to meet and who knows whose stories we're going to sort of intertwine with and what this journey is going to look like and how my art's going to progress and all of these things. So I think like my, uh, what I'm, yeah, I mean, I've almost forgotten what the question was, but yeah, I think kind of like where, where my passion from it is, is it, Looking back, yeah, I'm just going to end up repeating myself. I'm no, just no, excited no. to kind of that, have that That's time good. Now. So, like, if there was one thing you could get out of it, what would it be? Internally, and then let's talk externally, too. So we could tie a measurable result to it. So I'm going to start with internally. Um, I remember, so I did a project in 2016 called, well, it I, it came to be called 303030 30 London, which is which I basically went around the Monopoly board the London Monopoly board and did 30 creations in 30 locations in 30 days. It was mental and absolutely exhausting. But at the end of it, I stood in this random underground, under like underground parking lot that I didn't even know existed at the beginning of the 30 days. And I'd met a load of people. I'd gone and done an art session in, in a London prison with a with a prisoner there who I who I had no engagement with prior to it. That thirty day journey, I basically stood at the end and I met uh, the art on the wall was like yeah it was nice and everything but what really hit me was the people that I'd met and the real connections that I'd gained from nowhere. So and that that like really hit my soul and my heart. You know I got to the end and I was just looking around. And I thanked people that came to the show and I was just like this like just thank you from a like at a personal level and so i'm the bit like the internal bit that i want to get out of it is just human connection like that's i, I love human connection so i'm that from an internal perspective that's what i'm looking forward to what would be like an external thing of like damn this led to this this is what i wanted from an external perspective i think even it if it be... transforms and evolves into a different way than you were expecting Let's yeah say that. just i think so it's I think not like I... fail or nothing yeah, my my external thing is is you know I guess career career progression in terms of kind of artistic progression. Um, like I know where my passions are, and I know how excited I am, passionate I am about about process art and everything I'm doing. And so I think in twelve months' time, with the really focusing on a journey and making it count, I'm excited to kind of go cool i am i'm 12 months further on i've worked hard and i'm in a like I, I like to think i'll be in a like i will be you know it's sort of reviewing the whole like hope and all this kind of language but i'll be in a good spot you know and i'll i'll be 
I'll be proud of what I've achieved and I'll be looking forward to continuing to progress that more. So career progression and potentially something like a, your first art gallery would be like a yeah. huge miserable result. Okay. So last question before I give you what I feel like would be most valuable from what I've learned from you. And then we'll yeah. kind of land the plane from there, but overall above everything else, we should vibe to what we do. We should know why we should care about something, but why should someone else care? What's the value you feel someone else is going to find in this? And I'm challenging all of you to kind of think of, especially anyone listening right now, what do you think the value is in your work? Are you entertaining? Are you inspiring? Are you educating? So I, the, my main goal generally, like I said at the start, is to encourage this space of openness, play, and a space where people are free to be vulnerable. Those are like three uh, human traits that, and like just general traits that I think are really What are those important. three again? Uh, so uh, general openness, openness and honesty, uh, play, whether that's creative or just a, a sense of play in life, and also to uh, to allow vulnerability. So in terms of what, what other people, what I want other people to get out of it is that me exhibiting those through the, through the process of what I'm doing gives them permission to do it themselves in their own lives. Um, so this documentary is a permission slip. For other people Absolutely. to tap into purposeful play. I think so. And, and everything else. Yeah. There's your three pillars of what it's built on. There's your number one takeaway that you want to drive home each episode or each um, portion of it, all 12. Like let people know up front, this is what it is. Here's the goal. Okay. So here's the, th the importance of what stands out for me that I feel people would find most value in. And then I'll end up playing with a couple of things I wanted to say to you, but um what I've really noticed in you is the importance of play and letting go of the end result and what you're creating. Obviously speak towards that. That was already one of the things that you've talked about. Um, your willingness and boldness and fearlessness to experiment, chase your curiosity, but follow it up with big ass action. All right. Not just talking about it, but doing that shit. Anybody can talk. Um, your ambitious pursuits of pitching your siblings projects, like going in and pitching it to people. Like here's how I do it with a cold audience and drops everywhere. Um, and here's how I do it. Like videotape yourself going in and getting rejected at places, you know, um, talk about where certain projects don't turn out well, share that ugly on certain things like, damn, this bicycle piece sucked. It rained and it screwed up my project. And then show like the triumph of getting back on the bike and knocking it out the next day kind of thing. And then overall continue to stress and talk about the importance of finding and involving yourself in community, building relationships, nurturing those relationships, be kind every opportunity is someone holding that door open. So relationships are everything. And that's what I feel like would be super helpful within this documentary. And then some final notes I want to say to you, I'll give you the round of applause, but I want to speak toward the amount of progress you made this year. Like you said, you can, a lot can change in a year, you know, for all of you, imagine where you're going to be this time next year with the work you're doing now. Early in the year, you could hardly freaking communicate what the hell you were trying to create. I was lost, man. I had no idea what the fuck you were talking about on our first call. <laughs> yeah, but then today, I'm like, dude, I get it. Like, I can see your vision. And it's because you put in so much work on yourself while having fun in the process, finding continually pushing how to articulate what you do, how to simplify the terms, how to speak toward, like I'm explaining, being a process artist to a fifth grader, and uh, as well as understanding, even though my audience might be gathering people as well, bridging the gap between both of those worlds. That's been huge. Like your positioning and messaging each week, you've been dialing in. And most importantly, you've constantly put community first, whether it's your audience or you're supporting your coaching audience late into the night like it's all super commendable or um, um respectable like mad kudos and props to you as this fall session wouldn't be the same without your brother so wanted to make sure i got all that all my notes down but yeah this this group wouldn't be where it's at without you here so guiding and steering the ship man kind of the anchor thanks i appreciate you man a bit, a bit emotional there thanks uh i wouldn't be here without the group either so yeah, man, you come a long way. Imagine we're going to be this time next year with a freaking documentary with it too. So it'll be well documented. <laughs> yeah. Oh, much love, brother. And thanks for starting this off on a high note for us. Cheers, buddy. Hell yeah. Let's keep rolling. Yee. All right. We got brother Vinny up. What's up, world? My name is Vincent Allen Dogan, owner of Paperball Creative. 
I create custom hand-lettered work that revolve around mental health and harsh truths with a positive with a positive perspective. I get tongue twisted there all the time. My work is for my past, my past self and anyone who's ever felt alone in a dark place with no one to lean on for support. My goal is to motivate people shift into a more positive and uplifting state of mind, as well as collaborate with brands who share similar values centered around mental health. Well done. Well done. You can tell we've been putting in work over here to <laughs> communicate the value we provide this world. Because how many of you in the beginning had no idea when I put you on that question, like, tell me a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you do, why should someone care? <laughs> All of you stumbled through that shit and look at you today. It's just going to be more dialed in as you go. So it's impressive, like very, very impressed with all of you. So um, what's on your mind? What's on your plate? What do you want to chat about today? Um, well, I mean, <laughs> I, I literally stumbled through that too, but that's okay. Right. I think that's part of the authenticity thing um, that I'm trying to strive for. Um, the, the, I think right now, the biggest thing, maybe not the biggest thing, but the something I, I'm been kind of thinking about a, with my posts lately, um, I'll look at my, uh, I'll look back at some of the stuff that I've created, like the mock-ups on the mugs and stuff. Um, and I think to myself, like, okay, is this something that would attract people to hire me for? Like, if I want Starbucks to hire me, are they going to be like, cool, this is a mug that I want in my store? <laughs> like, is that enough? Um, and there's things like that where I'm just like, okay, do I, like, I started to think about um, your, one of your past students who did that Nike campaign, um, where they mocked up like, all these different ads and stuff. Yeah. Shout out to um, Marvin Nunez real quick. Fall 2020. Yeah. Um, all that Nike stuff like that looks like legit Nike work. And I'm like, do I need to go that route? Like earlier in our little breakout session, I was kind of talking about how much I really don't like doing marketing ads. Um, but for like my day job, I do it because one, it's part of my role. Um, but it's also, it's kind of a face of a company. Um, and so like one thing I don't want to convey myself as is um, that like is just a marketing designer and something that like I want my creativity and the stuff that I make to be forefront of everything. And I want like I want to be hired for that type of shit, like my artwork, my message um, and all that. So do you think that like designing a marketing campaign or things outside of products is a way to attract clients? Like, am I, am I on the right track or am I thinking that I need to expand it a different, like, am I making sense? Does that make why sense? do you want clients in the first place? Why, so why can, freelance? <clears throat> um, biggest thing is so that I don't have to take these like uh, day jobs that um, I'll have to sit and do marketing ads for. Like, the, my current job is great because I get to handle a lot of stuff. Like I can do packaging, I do marketing, I do whatever, just graphic design, general graphic design stuff. It's a startup. So I get to wear a lot of hats. So freelance is just a means of escaping a day job to have a different day job that's on your Yeah. Um, I think I don't want to be, I don't want to say that I, I work for a company. I want to work for my company and the other companies are my clients. Does that make sense? Flipping the roles a little bit. So in a utopic, perfect world, money wasn't an issue. If you were just crushing it and thriving it every day, doing you for your own business, what would that scenario look like? Would it be, I did this thing for Starbucks? Would it be, I'm streaming and selling my own products? Would it be some other form of like, what would that one thing look like that would just be like dude if that was me every day mine would be like drawing and coaching kind of on the same plane but probably coaching still and then drawing still just the fun part of what i do but coaching is like <clears throat> fulfills me the most yeah um and i think that's kind of where my um where it gets kind of blurry for me because i i love i want to be able to like make money off of just drawing. If I could just do that, that'd be cool. Um, and I think the byproduct of that is having to create and drawing using my what? graphic design, uh, hand lettering and illustration. Like Hand is, lettering and illustrating what? Oh, I got, I don't know. Quotes, like. Um, quotes about what? 
or digging right now, mental health. Um, but honestly, like why I, mental health? Uh, it's important to me because of how much I feel like I have to like, um, endure, I guess on a day-to-day basis, uh, and really have been since really. And I always track this back to like when I was in college and like I was in the design program and I got kicked out of the design program with one semester left before getting a BFA and having to like continue to crawl that back. So there was a lot of mental barriers I've had to kind of hurdle over as well as like a few or a couple of my long-term relationships in the past ending and like just kind of like on this up and down roller coaster where I've always kind of like questioned my ability, but also had to like believe in myself and hearing other people believe in me. And then it's just that balance. So of like the, the main core of it is the mental health thing is important to me because I, I know a lot of people also kind of struggle with this kind of stuff. Um, and I want to advocate for that and have that voice be heard. Um, yeah, I guess that's, 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 that's why. solid. Um, yeah. So during the season, I'd mentioned it during the breakout session. It's like, you're truly finding yourself in your work during this yeah. time, believing in your abilities, having confidence in yourself, finding your lane, something bigger, why you're creating, you know, t- having a, a bigger purpose to why you're doing what you're doing. Cause right. it's empty when you're just, most people are just like, I want to do client work. Cause they think that's the means of escape. It's going to be easier when no, it's way, way, way harder doing your thing full time. And if the passion isn't there and all it is, is I'm good at it and I want to do it just to escape a day job. Like to me, that's not enough to me. That's lacking the soul to it. Like there's gotta be passion, such a buzzword, but it's so true. Like if you don't truly enjoy something, it doesn't light you up. It doesn't, you don't, you have a hard time sleeping because you can't get it off your mind or you're stoked to put your 10 little tootsies on the floorboards in the morning to go to work on something. If that's missing and you want to do freelance, just to do freelance, to do your thankful, like it's going to be a tough ride. So why I'm drilling you is like, I'm trying to find the true core behind what you're doing. Cause yeah, freelance is totally possible. Selling your merch is totally possible. Building the audience is all possible, but I think people are going to hire you because you're you people hired Marvin, not only because it's dope work, but because he was like openly sharing things within his work, sharing the process behind it, educating, inspiring, being his true self, pushing his limits and vulnerability within his captions. Like, yeah, he was pushing himself all around and then sharing it out there and promoting himself in a non-gross way, storytelling. And it just happened to land in the right person's lap and he didn't have a massive audience. So to me, what you're doing great during this season, I wouldn't stress about like, is this going to land me a client? The more we stress about the end result, the more likely we're probably pushing it further away. It's like the more we stress about the lack of money, the harder it is to obtain money because we have a shitty relationship with it and we're not attracting it. We're, oh my God, what's the word? I'm deflecting it in a sense. We're putting this barrier like this is so hard to get that I'm just going to make it harder for myself to get it. So the last thing I would want you to worry about is stressing over clients when you're truly finding your groove within your work. And we can still leverage it like the coffee cups, you know, and everything else. But at the end of the day, what makes you feel most fulfilled? Getting a client lead or like someone massively resonating with your story during this season? Because bills are covered, right? Like bills are covered right now. So if you didn't have a freelance job, the world's not going to crumble, right? Right. Um, and it, but it, And then it goes back to also kind of that external validation, right? Like, sure. Like, I love it that people resonate. Like I get tons of messages, not just from this group, from outside, you know, my friends and stuff that are like, I really needed to hear this. And that's great. Like that makes, that validates everything that I do. But then there's the other side, the professional side of it, where I'm just like, all right, well, like, then it would be validating if that was also making money. Does that like, and it's the ego. Yeah. Most people yeah. feel like I am validated if I get a big client project and make money. Now I get clout. That's the ego needing stroked. Yeah. Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe that's like, that was my ego. I, in the I think beginning. It's, uh, no one's going to take me serious if I don't have big clients. Hence why I chase the freelance. Yeah. Route. And a lot of people yeah. chase and the freelance routes for validation 
right. from external sources. I'm like, but what makes you feel validated with your own shit? Yeah. And I think a big part of that was like living in California. Like I, I was, I went to San Jose state and I was in the heart of Silicon Valley where everyone's working. Like I currently work for a startup in Palo Alto um, remotely from here. But um, I think a big part of that was like everyone that I was working with was like, Oh, I work for Google. I work for fucking Apple and stuff. And I have, I've worked for Apple, Google and eBay. Um, but it's like, I didn't get any fulfillment out of that. Um, and I, I've realized that like part of the reason I left California is because of that kind of feeling and sure like Amazon and shit's here. But, um, then because I kind of separated myself from that group, I was able to like one live alone, but I also got to like really focus in on like what my goal was and not worry about like getting someone hired else's by definition Apple. of success. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, it's now I'm able to kind of like compartmentalize those things and be like, all right, that's fine. Like I'm working for a startup that doesn't necessarily make a ton of money or like, it's like, we have a great product, but I'm not trying to like get rich off of this product. Like I want to be rich on my own stuff. Um, whether that's like money or not, like, I mean, I don't know. Like, I like shit. Like, I like buying things. Like, I'm not, I, I'm a shoe head. Like, I've always like collected shoes. I'm not big on shoes now, but I like stuff. Like, I like to buy things for myself, like gifts and stuff. Um, but I don't do it all the time. I'm always just like, uh, like, so I think the, the freedom of having money to be able to spend and not necessarily spend it, because like, it's back to like that let's, scarcity let's, mindset. Let's, yeah, let's get back to, the project of blending things. So what I feel like you're doing really right, really well right now is storytelling, finding yourself in your work. That is huge. The more we stop stressing our clients, we can still plant seeds, but the more we're tied to that end result that that validates me, the more we're pushing and kicking the can down the road. You know, it's like obsessing about results. I'm not saying you're obsessing on it, but some people are like, this is the only way I can get that external validation to stroke my ego. When really I want to challenge you and anyone else thinking I'm like the route you're going right now with your work and then using a mock-up and stuff, the more value and the more impact you create and the more you dive deep into a season of understanding who you are within your work is going to massively lead to those end results that you were originally looking for as a byproduct. The more work you do on yourself during the season, how do you know who your work is for if you don't know who you are within your work? as I mentioned earlier, otherwise we're just like getting hired for an imitation, an imitated version of ourselves, an imposter. What happens if you went all in and then you were getting hired for the things that you truly wanted by the big leagues when they come. So what I, my best advice for someone in your shoes, and this is what I told Marvin too. I'm like, yo, we're going to show up and create, have fun. Don't expect this seed to blossom overnight. Focus more about the internal result. Make this a season of you. Hire you as your own perfect client. And as a result of that, of not stressing and obsessing about the end result, the end result came to him way fucking quick. For some yeah. students who obsess, obsess, it doesn't come to them right away and they take an L and consider themselves a failure. So the work yeah. you are doing now, I want to just encourage you to do more. To me, what a successful end of 12 weeks would look like for you is the fact not only you built a big old body of work, but man, you're hella confident in who Vinny is within his work, your message, your style, all within your body of work, how you present and promote yourself in a non-sleazy way, your storytelling, your personal brand building, your personal brand building right now. And as a byproduct, it'll lead to getting hired. It'll lead to putting shit in your shop, having people love and want to know, like, and trust and buy you people hiring you, not because of your dope work, because of your Vinny first, who also happens to speak on mental health and creates dope work. Like who knows you going deep on the season of mental health. You might get hit up for greeting cards by Hallmark. You might get hit up for target for gift cards. All ideas to leverage. Literally one of my clients. (laughs) And then some type of mental health campaign for sneakers. To leverage your sneakerhead, blending your interests, your passions, your style, your beliefs around certain things, your values, your story within it, your strengths and your skills. This is what's going to lead to the end result, but just leveraging it. Be like, hey, this is for me. This is for hire. And if you want to be for hired, make it bold and broad as day within your bio of like, yo, hire me for this. If during the season, your goal is to get hired, let it be known. 
even if you don't get hired for it right away, but still you're just planning the seed and letting the universe know. But from my biggest advice is don't worry about that end result of the validation, get validation through your work internally first versus seeking external. Yeah. Like we got to let go. That's all out of our control. We can't control people hiring us. We can put ourselves in position and plant seeds for opportunities. We can't control people liking our work, but if we vibe to ourselves and show up with intent impact value, it's going to attract the right person over time. And you never know when someone in your audience may hear that you want this type of project. They might know someone somewhere else. So any other questions before I kind of uh, land the plane with some notes that I had to say? Oh, that's helpful. Uh, no. Yours is like a mindset each week of shifting of the external to more internal. By focusing yeah. on the internal, it'll lead to the external. Yeah, I think um, I think the reason why it kind of feels like it's a recurring thing is because I did come into this program thinking, all right, after 12 weeks after this, I'm going to get hired by somebody. And I was like, you know, that's like, that was like, I don't know, an ambition of mine of being like, all right, 12 weeks, I'm going to crank this shit out. And I'm a, I'm just going to put some stuff out and people are going to hire me for it. And I was like, I'm going to fucking do it. <laughs> Excuse my language. Still but totally that, fucking <laughs> possible. <laughs> right. For sure. hundred percent. But, but that I is something that is right. extremely out of your control, but coming right. in with like, what can I get for myself for internal yeah. growth? Yeah. That's going to speed up that external goal way quicker. Yeah. Yeah. It's so like someone coming in, back. but like my goal is to get 10,000 followers. I have a hundred right now, but the end of 12 years, I'm like, dude, that is out of your control. Yep. But putting yourself in position, it. it could pop off like six months from now, like it did for Marvin. Someone else right. was a year and a half from now and they got the dream client and they were in the OG program. So measurable results that are smart, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bound. Right on. So you're doing great right now. And what I will have to say, and we can, and I'm going to keep drilling this into your head each week and challenge you because it's, it's a mindset shift. You know, we're so um, wired by the outside world and Instagram and society of like, this is what success is. And I'm challenging, you know, what's your own definition of success, I guess, is the main thing. By the end of this 12 weeks, here's what, what I would see consider success is defining what is a true success for you in terms of internal wins. That to me, for all of you, like what would the end of a, a successful 12 weeks look like for you from internal wins? If you check these three boxes, what would that definition of success look like? That is within your control. Does that make sense? And we yeah. can carry this on to um, off air, but sure. what I want to say and land the plane with is the past six weeks for you have been a roller coaster, for my friends, in terms of personal life, the day job, et cetera. It's been, it's been chaos for you, right? And yeah. despite the chaos, you found a way to continually show up, dig, scratch, and claw deep, slowly find yourself, your voice, and your style within your work while still planting seeds for the client part, which is good, feeding two birds with one stone. But all while above all, what I respect the most is that you continue to give value, you share your story, and continue to empower the fam. I see you in the, D, uh, the DM, or not the DMs, but I see you on people's comments. I see you on the threads, always challenging, pushing people. I love it. But most of all, what I thank you for is you were the first domino in here that I needed for someone to just open up with a vulnerable moment, living out your brand right now, wear your heart on your sleeve, not be afraid to keep shit real. Like you were the catalyst that sparked how close we've gotten over the last couple of weeks. Cause I told people there's going to be one domino to fall. Who's going to be that spark. And you were the spark and I'm forever grateful. I won't forget that shit. I do not forget. So really want to say, thank you. Trust the process, stay the course. And continue to have some fun with it, man. You're doing a great job. And thanks for being coachable above all else too. Appreciate it. Love you, Thank brother. you. Thank you, everyone else. Yeah, man. Keep slaying. Thanks. Next up, Magna ba -ba 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 Bowen. Boom, boom, boom. Wow, that's a hell of an introduction. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Magna Bowen uh, of Butter Yellow Creative, um, and I create clean yet detailed illustrative lettering. Uh, during the season, I'm pushing my lettering skills through self-initiated projects like Inktober um, to find my voice, develop my style, and find my groove. Um, my goal is to be hired by big and small brands that are focused on building connections between people that align with my interests. All right, let's take a minute real quick. Soak up your Inktober. By the time this comes out, people can look back and be like, damn, 
she showed up. She showed up. So what's on your mind? What's on your plate? Um, so uh, it's always what's coming next. Um, and it's, it's the 19th today. So I only have uh, 12 days of Inktober left. Um, and I want to figure out what my next project's going to be and um, try to focus a little more on where I want to go with it. Um, I have a couple of ideas. They are all over the place. And um, I just want to kind of uh, work through them a little bit to uh, maybe focus a little more. Um, Shoot me the top three and then we'll, or however many you have, and then we'll come back and I'll hit you up with follow-up questions. Okay. Uh, so I kind of broke it down into two different sets. Uh, I have high level stuff uh, and these are just very vague ideas. Um, and one of them is just monograms um, and just the, just letters, I guess. Um, uh, I don't know how, how hard that would be because I don't really have a lettering style established. Um, and then a second option is maybe script lettering, uh, which would include flourishes and ligatures, which I'm really, really enjoying doing and wouldn't mind a whole lot of, a whole lot more practice with. Um, so those are my big idea sets. Uh, and then I have a little more narrowed down um, ideas. So one of them is phrases that I could do um, that focus on like food and beverage industries. Um, and all of these would be like a series of five or 10 or something like that. Um, another idea was maybe something to do with baking. Um, I love to bake and I think baking puns are pretty, well, puns are just hilarious um, and embarrassing, but that's the funny part. Um, yeah, so just baking or food and beverage industries, um, those are my more narrowed or industry-based um, categories, if that makes any sense. Uh, so what I realized after writing these down is the first one is more trying to focus on nailing down like a lettering style. And the second set seems to be more what industry or what type of um, people to cater to. I, I don't know if I'm making any sense, but um, yeah, th those are my ideas, at least the start of a few ideas. So I'm judging based on your energy, your reaction when you said each one, your facial expressions. Can you guess which one I'm going to talk about first? I'm going to guess baking. <laughs> your face lit up. You had a big old cheesy ass smile on your face. You were like, and I love to bake. You put an accent on it. <laughs> so. A series of three or five. What if it was baking related? Series of five minimum or whatever, whatever you want. But then you can weave in the cursive style so you can work on a specific style. You can still hit the industry that you want to be in. And it's something that's fun and personal to you. So the storytelling is automatically going to be there, as well as the entertainment value of puns. Plus what I really, really, really like that you're doing really well that separates you from a lot of other lettering artists is you illustrate. This is the one I featured today. You were onto something here. This yeah, is your best really one fun. Yeah. by far. This is your best one by far. This is where I've seen the most growth in terms of composition, concept, Lettering style, like look at the Y little liggy right here. Look at that ligature. Yeah. And that O to N ligature. Woohoo. I'm a sucker for scripts. So this is like a script serif in a sense. Yeah, I really, really had fun doing that. I was and by so performance excited. too, that one is performing the best. Did you really enjoy that type of style? I did. I really loved it. And I, I haven't would. tried that till now. I would say build off it. If you really enjoyed it, it's performing the best as well. You enjoyed it. 
you're good at it. The demand in a sense, to me, those are like the three key points of like, huh, I really enjoyed this. I feel like I'm pretty decent at it and I could become really good. And it seemed to perform the best. Why not do more of what works? But leverage this script swash style with the ligatures in the bake scene. What's like one quote that comes to mind or a pun that comes to mind? Oh, I can't. I I, I keep thinking of wake and bake. That's just (laughs) a stack of flapjacks, a sunrise. Yeah, I am completely blinking. Um, I did not think that far. Um, What's your favorite thing to bake? Sourdough. Sourdough? Sourdough bread, yeah. Why? Why bread? Uh, I'm just really good at it. Mmm, <laughs> <Flexing>. and... <laughs> Well, okay. I'm just really good at it after the 15th loaf. I was really, really bad at the first one. Parallel that to lettering. Sourdough bread? No, I'm just saying like within the story time, you're kind of talking, you're basically what I'm asking you out loud is you're saying captions to me is what I'm hearing. Sure. You know, I always try to like get you to say your own caption and then be like, hey, look, you said a caption, but just making the parallel, like, dude, it took me 15, I'm day I just did 31 days of Inktober. It took me 31 attempts to finally get something really good that I enjoyed. Mm. And that's how bacon sourdough is to me. You know, it took me 15 practices of shitty loaves in order to get that one loaf. Like, damn, this is a good loaf. I took a lot of pictures. (laughs) You know, so that would even be fun. Like, gosh, you could even take photos of baking that you do. You could bake something new each week. And then like, make sure your design works over a photo somehow as well to show that extra wow factor. Cause imagine like a magazine and editorial spread. Oh, that'd be awesome. You know? So actually like get the act of bacon in there, leverage your Instagram stories, you know, show little highlights, make reels. Like here's your final piece. Here's a reel of you actually baking the bread that the pun will go with. Like that could be a killer reel of showing yourself within it too. Like to me, this just sounds like fun ass play that you can be purposeful with and super intentional and strategic with. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I guess I have my next project. All right. That's so awesome. Thank you. bringing home that sourdough. That's, that's hilarious. Shoot your best puns in there about bread. And uh, for anyone listening right now too, I want you to reach out to Magna and shoot her, shoot them, shoot her your best like baking puns as well. Let's feed the inspiration. Well, um, what kind of follow-up things do you have from here? You know, what kind of questions from here? Are you leveraging an editorial calendar? I know the answer. Uh, I am. Uh, I, and it's been incredibly helpful. Um, I'm a big planner and without planning, I just, I'm floating all over the place and like everybody, I have a shiny object syndrome problem. Um, and I really, really go deep and forget about all the important stuff. So it's been really, really helpful. Um, it's also helping me batch my tasks, which has been really great, especially with Inktober. Um, all of you know, but I decided to do Inktober the night before October. Yeah, what a psycho. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Um, so I didn't really have any, anything planned. I didn't know what I was going to do. And after seven hours for my first piece, I was just like, okay, I really need to find some sort of system. Otherwise I'm going to go crazy or give up. So, uh, it's been kind of working for me so far. What's the system that for anybody who's ambitious of doing Inktober or own personal, I'm just laughing at what people are posting in the chat. Uh, I can't even read that right now. Don't don't read it right now. It's distracting me. I got to like hide it real quick. Um, <laughs> how has having a system, define your system for Inktober, how has that helped for someone looking to get into this in the future or a 36 days of type or some type of challenge anybody puts out there? How has having a system helped you? What's that look like? Um, so, well, first of all, uh, I know when I started, we talked and you talked about constraints. Um, that's not, that was huge. Just having certain colors. Um, so I, I just decided to go with black and white, uh, not overcomplicate it. Um, and I decided to go with like our deco type 
fonts, um, which I kind of got away and into and out of, but totally okay. <laughs> it, it was a good foundation. Yeah. Um, so just constraints like that, setting some time constraints. Um, and how much time having, do you put in each piece right now? Um, so for context, I'm going to say in the beginning, it was taking me two hours to write one caption, just a caption. Um, now it's taking me about 15, 20 minutes, which is a huge Told you it's going to speed up. You're going to get really good at bullshit and captions on the fly. <laughs> I, I think I am. <laughs> you are. Um, for I am. sure. For sure. Uh, so we got time constraints. Yeah. We have color constraints, color palettes. We have style constraints in terms of like, here's the fonts I was originally using, you know, but you went with your gut with some other things, but still keeping it within a wheelhouse. That's not going to take you forever. Cause yes. the whole goal of these constraints, why I'm talking and bringing this up is the fact so many people get overwhelmed looking at a blank canvas that they don't know where to start. There's so many different options that they waste too much time trying to be perfect instead of being like, Hey, here's my 85% done is better than perfect. Like there's no way you can go into Inktober without having some constraints. Yeah, I've been there and I didn't, and it crushed me. I still got it done, but man, it was hard as hell. Yeah. Um, at least for lettering. Um, another one was fonts. Um, those are really, really, really helpful for inspiration. Um, but, uh, other than constraints, batching my tasks, was huge uh, in the sense that I have, I still have the hardest time writing my captions. Uh, so I started writing maybe two captions a day. It depends on the day, but um, just getting them out of the way, my captions and my hashtags. That way I just have to do the fun part, which is the lettering. So it's kind of like a little reward for myself. I start with the caption and I'm like, okay, now I get to go play. Um, so that's been really great. What I talk about, as you build a successful high, uh, a side hustle and you want to thrive in your business, a big key to doing this long-term is figuring out what requires the heart, the most willpower for you and what requires the least amount of willpower that you can do anytime. So the mm -hmm. fact that you're attacking captions and batching those first, dude, you guys are killing it in the chat right now with these puns, um, but attacking the hardest willpower test first and then treating yourself with the low willpower fun test. The fact you're training yourself how to do that now is going to pay off massively. Like writing is the hardest part of my business. So writing comes first always because that's what makes my business move forward. And that's what I think separates you from other people is the illustrative element that you add and your writing. So sorry, I wanted to like interject like killer takeaway there. Keep going. Um, actually, I mean, that's, did I answer your question? Um, uh, about above my and beyond. Okay. Uh, and now I'm seeing like all these different ways you can parallel the baking to what you're doing. Like, you know how you batch certain, you know, you, you're not going to just make one cookie at a time. Like you're going to batch and make two dozen, you know? Always. So, but also with your business, yada, yada, yada. Like I'm seeing ways you can like educate and entertain people helping other people out. You know, I think that's like a, a great thing. Ooh, illustrating recipes would be cool at some point. That'd be really fun. Why not? Yes. Check that one down. Who knows? That could turn into that next, you know, because Lucy's coming up next. But now I think of donuts. I think of Lucy. When I thought of Dungeons and Dragons, I thought of Nancy from a, a past uh, program. When I think of peaches, I think of Rob Almeida, you know, so it's like a powerful thing nerdy now. And hopefully once in a while, if you see pizza, you'll think of me, you know, little random things like that. So, uh, Anything else you want to add to it? This has been great. Thank you for these little nuggets. Um, yeah, um, not, well, uh, just generally, I, I want to say having this community, this coaching family has been the huge push um, that I really, really need. Like every day, it's crazy. It's so, so helpful. Not only the fact that everyone makes the effort to engage with my posts, even just liking it matters so much, but just looking at the incredible stuff everyone puts out is just, it's so inspiring it, and it keeps me on my toes because I can't just take it easy and just do whatever. Um, so it's, it's just extremely valuable. You were supposed to be here in the first place and it's crazy how you're here. 
because you were so scared. You were so timid. You were holding on to limiting beliefs that you weren't cut off for this and didn't belong here. I, I pay attention to who keeps clicking on links, who keeps opening emails, who clicks on the links. I don't know if anybody in here even knows this part yet, but I totally pay attention. I'm like, damn, this person clicked this so many times. I wonder now how many times have they clicked this link to open up an application form? How many times did they fill it out and never give themselves a shot? Why didn't they give themselves a shot? I want to connect with them because the people I know who keep doing it, I'm like, something there is blocking them. Let's have a talk. You know, I don't want it to be a gross pitch. I just want to get to know you to see where you're at. And maybe through our conversation, you can start taking moves. So I hit you up. You were definitely caught off guard, right? I really thought it was an automated email. I'm like, no, fine. I'll just reply just in case. We, we jumped on a call ASAP. No girl sales pitch. And I was like, if you want to hear more, you can hear more. But you didn't think you belonged here and you, here and you were really bought into limiting beliefs. Yet halfway into this today, you've shown up and created more work in six weeks than you've easily done in the last two years. Easily. How many years? Five years. Five years. God, mm-hmm. I didn't want to say six weeks and six years, <laughs> but like five years. I was shooting low and hoping you would shoot it higher. You've thrown yourself into the fire and took on a psycho task out of nowhere last minute, like Inktober, and you've hit every day. Old Magna early on. Yes, round of applause. Old Magna early on in that first call would have never given yourself a shot to do that. You would not have thought you could do it. No. You've pushed your lettering skills. You've exploded your writing, your storytelling through your captions. You've leveraged constraints. You've kicked ass in the realms of time and project management. All despite moving to a different state, I was going to miss you. A lot of traveling in between to move all your shit, getting your old house ready to sell, and just throwing yourself in the fire. So at the end of the day, like you were meant to be here. And why I'm bringing this up is so many of us are just stuck in our own way. We're too scared to bet big on ourselves. We have some type of limiting belief, whether it's influenced, seeking external validation, Family members not thinking we're capable, the outside world, just comparison, imposter syndrome being too much for us. We find all these reasons to hold ourselves back, yet you gave yourself a permission slip. And I'm letting people know that your talk today, your experience here is now a permission slip to everyone else. So thanks for being a permission slip here and just like owning your genius and where you're going to be like a year from now because you bet big on yourself. So that's another big round of applause. Like, you got something special brewing right now and fucking own it. And you're doing an incredible job. Thank you. Iowa will miss you. <laughs> All right. Last but not least, we got the donut queen, Lucy Manning. <sighs> Hello. Should have had like a, some type of like, uh, nope. um, <laughs> yeah, some kind of like walkout intro for each one of you. So I'm sorry. It just kind of hit me in the last two. So I apologize. I still love all y'all. Um, but Lucy Manning, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, I'm Lucy Manning and I specialize in food, beverage, and travel-based illustrations and branding. My current season of work helps locally focused companies tell their story and share their passion for their craft through custom, colorful, and highly detailed illustrations. My goal is to provide each client with a unique product that they're excited to show off to their customers and community. Short, sweet, perfect, loving it. So what's on your mind today? What's going on in your world? And also let me make sure I bring up your work so we can flex on you too for a little bit. Um, well, so I had texted you yesterday, Scotty, um, saying that I didn't really think I had anything to talk about, but I have since thought of something. Um, I mean, I can still chat about kind of what I've learned and what's been helpful to me so far. Um, but I did kind of just want to take a minute to like acknowledge that originally, like, you know, week one, when we were all introducing ourselves on the Facebook group or, or the document, the Google doc or whatever, I, um, I was like, one of my goals is to like level up my illustrations and I've done, I'm proud of the work that I've created so far, but I feel like it is not like in, in, I'm proud of what it is, what it looks like, but I feel like I haven't necessarily pushed myself that much. Um, so yeah, I'm just, 
I'm trying to figure out if that is like worth it. How do I mix that in with also like sticking to a schedule and pushing out content? I don't know if that question, if there's so a question first, there. We need to define what is leveling up your illustration skills mean? How do you tie a measurable result to that? Um, that's a great question. I don't, I don't know. I think I just want it to look, I think in my head, I have a vision that my illustrations would be like more detailed or have more perspective or more like depth to them than they do now. They're a little bit flat. Um, so that's sort of what I. Why do you feel about. they need more detail? Mm, I guess because I see other other people's work on Instagram and feel like, oh, I love what that looks like. I want to do that too. So we're giving into outside comparison potentially. So Probably. what's not detailed about this? Like, dude, you just drew like 3,000 sprinkles on this. <laughs> uh, yeah. To me, this, from where you were beforehand with some of the old Pettit stuff, I see improvement. I see like, what? Not only are you not improving, not only are you improving in your illustration skills, but what? I saw that today and I hurried up and like, I swapped out the original artwork I had in the stories post that I put out you on today. Mm -hmm. And I saw you posted this yesterday, late last night. I swapped this out late last night. I was like, whoa, not only are you leveling up your illustration skills, but your presentation skills. So to me, another way of leveling up your illustration skills is how do you present your work? How do you combine it and showcase it in different settings? Not necessarily the style, but how you're presenting your work with iPads, how you're presenting your work in mock-ups, how you're presenting your work as patterns. To me, this is all level leveling up. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I mentioned before, like certain things like depth, I would love to see some type of scenery, some clouds. I don't mm -hmm. know. Um, illustrating some of this landscape and scene behind it, like truly capturing the location of where this place is, not just the shot. Maybe the rest of it's all just in black and white, but the color pops out. Those are other ideas I'm like for in terms of depth and detail, but yeah. your style is so unique to you. You have such a like clean, simple and flat style, yet highly detailed. And it works for you. So let's not get wrapped up in what other people's details are when you clearly have something working, you make simple, easy, yet keep it super complex. You know, like this is hella detailed, but it looks so flat and clean. There's someone out there that would love that style. But if you want to experiment, take on your next project of like, let me use some halftone brushes, you know, determine what you like in someone's style. Why do you like it? Is it coming from a place of it's dope and it's performing really well. And they did it for a big client. Is it coming from that type of place? The ego, the imposter syndrome, the comparison part of you the in the inner critic, or is it stemming from like, huh, you know, I really like half tones. And I just noticed like the last 10 things I've pinned or saved, I'll have half tones in them. Mm -hmm. What if I went in a season of experimenting with half tones? Oh, Hey, what's up girl. Um, my cats joined the, the conversation here, but you get what I mean? Like, let's really look through when you're saving and you're really loving something that you notice in someone else really pin. I think maybe even yams over here said this recently of like, when you're like looking at other people's work, study why, like uh, mm -hmm. reflect on it. And yeah, that's been huge for me. That's where I found out like, man, I love badge concepts. I love more bold, aggressive colors. And I love more bold, aggressive, gritty, uh, illustrations and skulls. And I really love uplifting motivational stuff as well as elevating your work comes with concepts like a freaking wheelchair with donuts. Like <laughs> to me, that's another way of leveling up your work. You're pushing your concepts. You're pushing your presentation to me. That's where I see you leveling up. 
Mm-hmm. Would you agree? Yeah, no, that's, um, I mean, stuff like that's always helpful to hear from. You're too close to it. We're all too me. close to our own to shit. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so no, that's helpful. Mm-hmm. Good way to kind of reframe it. Um, but yeah. you like clean. We're pushing you more on like colored backgrounds and certain things like that, more contrast, but the detail, keep pushing it. If you find like you really like certain kind of textures or really um, look at all the different things you may have pinned and start looking for themes and patterns. Like, why do I, is the color palette I like here? Is it the textures? Is it the presentation? Define mm-hmm. what leveling up and that looks like before being like, oh, I wish my shit looked more like them. Like understand where it's coming from. Cause you're 27. You're still young, figuring out your style. I'm still, I'm 33, still finding my style and voice. So mm-hmm. yeah, you are leveling up. Maybe it's certain things too. Like, um, here's something you could think of. Um, this could be really, really be helpful to uh food straighter. Here's something that could probably help out too. light sources within yours. Yeah. So where are cast shadows, where's the light source coming from? What type of shadows? Where's the, the highlight at? You know, this dude does a great job. I wish I could find, okay, boom. My homie, Mike Fuchs, love you, dude. But he breaks this down. Want to learn this type of illustration style? You don't necessarily need to learn his style, but what makes his work is the depth, the texture. But he has custom shadows, ring lights, uh, the lighting, rim lights, depth. Maybe experiments with lighting during the season and then go take a class of Skillshare. Go study lighting sources. To me, that would be like a huge thing that you could intentionally use to level up your stuff is lighting sources. That goes to all anyone illustrating like that. That's a boom. There's there's one big thing. So during a season, lighting, maybe some texture. And if you don't like the texture part, keep it clean. If you're just naturally in love with clean and flat design, you don't have to force it to be something else. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Yeah. So what else? I don't have anything else like to specifically ask you about. I can kind of go through some things that I feel like have been helpful so far for me, if if you want. Yeah, Um, I would love to. I want to kind of like we did with Magna. I want to challenge you to give me like the top three takeaways that you've learned and applied and that have helped you get to where you are right now, week six right now. So like, give me those top three takeaways and speak toward it of like why it helped and how it could help someone else the value. Okay. Okay. Um, so in no particular order, uh, first one caption writing, um, basically just not doing walls of text, um, and breaking it up. Um, and also like having a, a hook at the, at the top of the caption, um, has been helpful, even though like it took me a while to not feel like slimy doing it. (laughs) <laughs> but um yeah of like let, let, give an example real quick on a certain post and let's, let's um the compass yeah well yeah that's really the only one that has like the hook on it um whoa but, uh, what wtf why are we doing more hooks i don't know they're hard to think of i guess um batch them i don't know i i i guess like i think i like asking, even though it, I don't know, before I did this, it felt like, um, like people would be like rolling their eyes if I was doing something that was like, clearly like, give me your feedback. Like, cause I feel like I have seen people I know who are, you know, artists or whatever. And they're just kind of always doing kind of like, um, obviously kind of marketing type things like this. And it felt kind of annoying to me as a viewer. And so that's why I was hesitant, but clearly it works. And I'm over, I'm getting over that kind of perspective. Learning how to play the game and play the platform and people love to feel included. Like they have a decision in what you're doing. To me, you're involving your audience. You're letting people be heard. You're letting people know that you care about their feedback and opinion flip the switch of am I just trying to get this as a hack to get engagement, which most people are, or is this a way that gives me an opportunity to truly connect with people? One piece of advice I am going to call you out for everybody who commented, you didn't comment back. Mm -hmm. Even Gary V comments back in like the first hour of everything. 
you got a way smaller audience than Gary V. Go show those people some love. Make them feel heard. Respond yeah. back to those comments. Be like, thank you. A was my secret favorite too. He he's just something like that. <laughs> Not don't none of you take the easy route shortcuts of sending an emoji back. Nah, yeah. we're bigger and better than that. Like yep. people good. feel uh, people feel appreciated. Or uh people appreciate being appreciated, you know, and being heard, being understood. So leaving people hanging. I have suffered massively. I'm going to take accountability. I've been on it. Been great all these years. And just lately with this whole burnout season, I fell off getting back to people and I feel horrible about it, but my mental health is more of a priority, but I have a lot of shit going on and social media isn't my thing during this season. It's coaching and making sure I'm getting back to all of you. But during your season, man, like get back to me. If you're going to ask for engagement, you better engage your ass back with them. And I'm speaking to everyone, not just directly to you. Um, totally. but that's how we continue to build the audience. Like you never know, you continue to get the same person engaging. They might have a hookup for a donut client. You never <laughs> know. You are nurturing your audience, providing them value, making them feel welcomed. You never know. Like some of my best friends are because I continually engaged and got back to people. Some of my biggest leads, some of my biggest clients, some most customers coming through me or word of mouth is because I was like talking to someone carried over the DMS. You never know instead of planting seeds for you, let's call them planting sprinkles. You know, so you're planting sprinkles every day with what you're doing. Um, give me, give me two more. Two more. Um, the editorial calendar has been huge. Um, just no, and, and kind of that goes along with the prioritizing things, like knowing what is happening the next day or the next week. Um, it's been great. I don't, I don't feel like I'm being very eloquent about it, but um, just setting up a system and setting up almost like a, a longer roadmap has been extremely helpful. Um, Eliminate guesswork, show up with a plan of attack, kind of things like that. How has it helped your mindset and your efficiency? Um, well, with efficiency, it's it's helped me break down like a bigger project where I was like, I have six or seven donut places, instead of just picking one every week, I actually have them like set up in a list, um, you know, in, in an order, I suppose. Um, with like a date, a time, a date what days you're going to post. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, even like down to the details, like when I'm posting it has just been helpful, um, to stay organized. Um, yeah. And I, I think I just, like in terms of mentally, I feel it's just easier to get started when I know what I'm going to be working on, which we've all talked about before, but, um, that's been a big thing for me. That's fantastic. I feel like I need to put this editorial calendar in my shop. Uh, <laughs> what's the third thing? You got one more? Um, third thing, um, is, kind of just being in my, in my post, whatever on social media, being, um, honest about where I am. So like last week when I texted you and I was like, I'm behind, I'm not going to get this done this week. And you said, just post a picture of what you have so far. Um, and I had never really thought about that. I have, I had thought a lot about, oh, I can just push my editorial calendar out till next week or whatever. Um, but I had never thought about like, I can just post what I already have here. Um, I don't know. I just didn't think that that was something I could, was allowed, allowed to do. Um, and so, yeah, that was, that was big for me. I'm not used to posting sketches or half done work. Um, so yeah, I would say that that's, it's almost freeing to know that like it doesn't have to be perfect every time. So I think that everybody will nod their head to that. And like I say, with my own personal nutrition training coach, it's like, man, if I just show up 85% of the time, I kick ass 300 out of 365 days of the year, I'm going to get incredible results. And all of you, if you show up with this program, I don't know how many exact days, but if you show up 85% of the time and go all in out of this 12 weeks, you're going to get incredible results. Look at your 85% effort right now. Some of you have even like forced you to take a break or chill out. Like, yo, take the night off, get your mind right. 
um, take, go be with family, go with friends, like take the weekend off. Let's get back after it on Monday. You know, I even gave you the option, like, Hey, if you can't post three times this week, like one or twice is still a huge win. And look what you did. You rose up and you're going to knock out three out of it. Right. You did. Yep. Yeah. Like you rose up to the occasion and it still would have been a win with a hectic week. Like you still would have win just by showing up even just once, you know, versus going radio silent. So those are all massive wins. And I think the most important thing is you show up with a plan of intent and it shows. It shows. And I hope you feel it. Yeah. Do you have anything else you want to say before I land the plane? No, I think that's it. All right. So one, you are the donut queen to me until you start doing something else. But during the season, you're the donut queen, which is powerful. You know, you're literally the first person that popped in my head. I, I have a shirt for my son. That was like a funny donut pun. And I like took a picture and I texted you. I was like, dude, top of mind today. It's a powerful thing. But things I've really, really noticed about you that I want to commend you for is you've gone fearlessly super deep, niching down for a season in your own lane and owning this donut world. Like owning brain space in my head is a powerful thing. You know, it's great when it's like, oh, when I think of Lucy, I think of donuts. That's cool. But when I think of donuts and I think of you first, that's way more powerful. So that's the power of niching down for a season. Also, you significantly increased in areas of preparation, organization, time management, decision-making on the fly, letting go, stop being too fucking precious about the outcome and realizing like, hey, I can still just show up and do this. You know, I, I can break my limiting beliefs of what I thought was okay and acceptable to do navigating chaotic weeks and responding like a champ. So the work you've been doing on yourself, the hard skills, you know, it's coming in. Everybody wants, I want to create dope work and get a lot of likes and get a lot of attention for it. That's what people come into this thinking that they're doing. And I'm like, no, it's going to be so much more than that. It's going to be the hard skills, the foundational, the fundamental building blocks, the habits, the disciplines, the systems, the routines, in the community and the support and the accountability, that's what this is really about. And just creating dope work and elevating your illustration skills. That's a byproduct of it. And so the work you've been investing in now is paying insane dividends, especially in your confidence, your mindset, and your creative abilities. And I hope that you're seeing this stack on top of your body work, that this is going to blow shit up for you down the road because of the hard work and the commitment you're putting in now. So, and it's been great just to see the shift and the different person you become since we started working in June, I believe. Like mm -hmm. you're a different person and imagine where you're going to be a year from now. Yeah. So really proud of you. I'm really proud of all of you. And yeah, do you have anything to add to that? No, um, just thanks. It's great. It's It's been really awesome to to have a coach. I think that's the accountability and, and a group like y'all it's been, I honestly had low expectations of, um, what a group coaching program was going to be like. I, I didn't, I didn't know that people were going to engage as much as they have and be as supportive, but like right out of the gate, Greg Martin, like the, after our first group call, he sent me like a, some idea at, you know, probably 1 a.m. <laughs> like mm -hmm. for him, you know, it just like, and it has gotten like. See, Greg's been a part of the group coaching it. before. He knows what this turns into if people just give themselves up into it and let barriers and guards down. Yeah. So anyway, all to say, um, it's um, exceeded the group and coach, the group coaching stuff has exceeded my expectations, um, has been worth, worth the money. Um, so thank you. Definitely. Well, I appreciate it. And what I want to say to all of you before we have one of you land the plane, this is a scary thing. Not only investing a lot of money and your time and commitment and energy to being a part of something where it's the unknown, low expectation. You didn't know what to expect. None of you know what to expect. And then showing up with something like this and having me grill you live where thousands of people all across the pocket of the planet are going to hear and tune in what you're doing is hard. The majority of people I talk to or listen to or interact with on a day-to-day -day on the line or in person and locally, people are scared of hard. People are scared of the unknown. People are scared to invest big in themselves. They're scared to do hard shit where they don't know what the outcome could be. They are scared of what someone might think they're scared of. What if it's not perfect? They're scared of failing. 
you're the minor, uh, minority, you're the 1%, you were all meant to be here. You clearly want this as it's not supposed to be easy. Chasing your creative dream on your own terms, building it outside of a day job, families, life experiences, chaotic schedules, landing new jobs, traveling for work, whatever it is, this shit is fucking hard. The majority aren't cut out for it. The 1% are. You're the 1%. You listening today, you're the 1% if you're vibing to what we talk about today. And I hope that hearing what these badass false students had to say is inspiring to you to make sure you realize like, yo, you can make shit happen for yourself too. Limiting beliefs tend to always hold us back, but just get out of your own way, find some community, find some accountability, get around like-minded people. It's hard to thrive when you're isolated on an island as many as you know. You know, that was me for so long. This is why it's group coaching. This is why we work with a lot of introverts because it's hard. Like we want to build a safe space. So I um, just know I really, really, really appreciate all of you. I have mad respect for you doing the hard work and it's an honor and a privilege to be your coach. And it's an honor to introduce you to all these listeners. Like, God damn, I could not be more proud of each and every one of you today. So just know from the bottom of my heart, I really, really, really appreciate your presence. And I'm going to have Lucy land the plane tonight just because Lucy's right here. So you're top of mind again. And I had donuts on Sunday. So okay. because of those reasons, it's on you. So Great. I'm enough rambling on my end. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I will land the plane with um, something that when I was um, uh, just trying to decide if I was going to do this program, I um, reached out to a friend who is um, Good Letters Design on Instagram. Um, she's been kind of a mentor to me and very much an inspiration. And anyway, she told me, which I thought was um, just a great thing to keep in mind, that um, it is worth it to take steps to invest in yourself. And even if programs like this um, like don't give you exactly the results you you think they will, it's still worth it just because of the, the steps that you take to even commit to something like this. Um, so that's what I want to land the plane with is that it's always worth it. Even if it doesn't end up exactly how we think it will. Let go of the outcome, invest big in yourself. Cause whatever you learn in the middle of it is going to carry on to something else to the next thing you figure out. So thank you. That's awesome. I'm all about betting big on yourself and like, boom, I'm glad that someone else said it just proves my point, but have a great, fantastic night. And I do want to encourage anybody listening right now to reach out to each and every one of you and share with them what your top takeaway was. And I'll make sure to say that in the intro outro, but have an incredible night. Love y'all. And God, I can't wait to drop this one. Thanks again for listening. It'd be awesome if you took the time to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and let the comment below so we can connect. Again, if you want to catch a shout out as a future listener of the week, make sure you subscribe to the show on iTunes and give it a rating and review.